one of the great mysteries of the universe. Today on Earth, it exists in abundance, but how and when did it first appear? Around you are all the groups of animals alive today, divided into five great categories. Vertebrates, invertebrates, plants, bacteria, and fungi. If you look down, you're looking back in time over this great complexity of life to a common ancestor at the bottom. Humans first appeared around two million years ago. The dinosaurs were wiped out 66 million years ago. The first complex multicellular organisms arrived around 550 million years ago. But for the first three and a half billion years after the formation of the Earth, all that existed here were microscopic single-celled organisms. The planet was very different from the one we know today. The early continents had only just solidified. The land was volcanic, dry and lifeless. But deep in the oceans, life was beginning. Here, there were single-celled organisms. For millions of years, conditions remained unchanged, but slowly oxygen levels in the Earth's oceans began to rise, and that had a profound effect on the development of life. Cells began to stick together, forming clumps, some of which would eventually evolve into the complex animals we know today. These clumps of cells were held together by strands of a new protein, collagen. It's sometimes called the sticky tape of the animal world. It's the most common protein in our bodies. Collagen enables cells to stick together. The advantages of being multicelled were many. Clumps of cells could collect food more effectively. They could control the internal workings of their bodies and by working in a coordinated way, be more efficient. It was the beginning of complex life. Millions of years later, life had evolved far beyond its infancy as simple clumps of cells into considerably more complex forms. Charnia was a member of a community of creatures that lived at the bottom of the ocean 550 million years ago. This strange leaf-shaped organism is the oldest large multicellular creature we have yet discovered. Anchored to the sea floor, well out of the reach of light, they grew up to six feet, two meters tall. Having such a simple body plan came at a heavy price. Just a few million years after they first evolved, they vanished. An evolutionary dead end. Just as Charnia was dying out, new creatures appeared that were constructed in a completely different and more complex way. And they were able to take a new and crucial step. They began to move. It had taken 3,000 million years for multicelled organisms to appear. But just 50 million years later, an evolutionary blink of the eye, creatures we might recognize as animals were taking shape. Dickinsonia crept about, feeding on the organic matter on the seafloor beneath it. Kimberella was an early ancestor of the mollusks. Sprigina was the first animal we know of with a head at one end and a tail at the other, and between a body with two identical halves, were it to be split down the middle. Just a few
few million years later, around 542 million years ago, these animals began to evolve so rapidly that life seemed to have exploded into a multitude of new forms. During the next 10 to 20 million years, animals increased in numbers, diversity and size as never before. Suddenly, the oceans were teeming with life. Pikaia was a tiny worm-like animal, but he'd had something new, the beginnings of a backbone. It, or something very like it, was the ancestor of all vertebrates. And here is Opabinia, an animal so bizarre it looked like an unusually bold evolutionary experiment. The flaps along its side enabled it to propel itself forward. It had five eyes to search for food and a strange trunk with which to collect it. Wewaxia, once thought to be an ancestor of earthworms, is now believed to have been an early snail with a spiked protective shell. Lucigenia was even stranger. Its spikes were probably defensive, for now there were predators around. Anomalocaris may have been an ambush hunter waiting in concealment to grab unsuspected prey. could grow to over a meter, several feet in length. It was, as far as we know, the first big predator on Earth. Creatures now needed to be able to defend themselves. Ammonites, relatives of today's squid and octopi, evolved shells. Other creatures evolved hard, jointed plates that encased their entire bodies, an exoskeleton. This innovation led to some of the most successful creatures in the history of life, the arthropods. Trilobites. Their exoskeletons made them very successful, and they colonized all kinds of different habitats, just as modern arthropods do today. So far, we have discovered about 17,500 different trilobite species, and they came in a whole variety of different shapes and sizes. Today, the trilobites are extinct, but in their heyday, the continued evolution of their exoskeleton enabled their arthropod cousins to dominate the oceans. Then, 450 million years ago, some arthropods appeared that were truly giants. Sea scorpions grew up to two and a half meters, eight feet in length. They were the top predators of the day and they remain the biggest aquatic arthropod that has ever existed. The waters of the planet were now full of life, but the land remained barren and without animals of any kind. Life wouldn't colonize the land for another 100 million years. <laughs>